hard to condense such a, a, a large and long life into, into moments. What was admirable about my father were, for me was the efforts he made, and it wasn't 100%, it wasn't all the time, the efforts he made to look for the truth, his commitment to truth, and his slow discovery that it wasn't in Marx, and to some extent it isn't in science. For a long time it seemed to be in Freud, but it was deeper and more mysterious than that. But this a, a, a commitment to examining himself, to when he was young, and there's some confusion about the dates, because he likes to he likes to tell the story with himself as 18, but I believe he was 20, when he took his sister Sadie to the hospital. He drugged her, told her he was taking to a party, and took her to. I can't remember the name of the hospital. And the next day when he went to visit her, there she was in this uh, contraption where she's like, like a Turkish sweat contraption and comes in to see her and the, the contender says, your brother's come to see, her, see you. And she said, it's not my brother. When I was four years old, my father said, don't trust anyone, not even me. And my father, after that betrayal of, of Sadie, didn't trust himself. He writes somewhere that uh, as, a, as a lover, almost as a gimmick as a lover, he would tell, he would tell his, his uh, love, his, his, his uh, lovers, that, that he, he couldn't open himself, he couldn't give himself that that he wasn't able to do, to do this. And this was, he thought, a, 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 winning, a winning gambit, a winning uh, uh, ploy with, uh, with women. But I bring this up because this betrayal of Sadie was something he returned to and examined in his play, I've Seen You Cut Lemons, which Sean Connery directed it was, I think it's 69 at the Mayfair Theatre in London. Diane Chilenta played, played the part. And then later we wrote this several times and worked with John Cassavetes for a long time on this piece and they rewrote it. John, Johnny and Ted rewrote the story of Ted and, and Sadie as a piece called Love Streams. And what they, they did, Johnny and, and Ted, that what if this story wasn't about you and Sadie? What if this story was about me and Jenna? And Jenna was my sister. And they rewrote it for Jenna Rollins and, and John Cassavetes. It's a wonderful film. Uh, Love Streams. And there's also, there's a documentary, the making of, of uh, Love Streams. Harder to find. So, oh, where did it go? Love Streams le it led to Ted's six months close association with, with Leonard Cohen uh, because Leonard admired Love Streams enormously and, and it was through that that they, that they started hanging out together. And in the late 80s, in the late 80s, I, I was courting wonderful, wonderful poet Lee Harper. Ooh. And that was a little bit before the days of, of copy shops everywhere. And Ted had this copy shop in his, in his apartment. So I was the first person outside her immediate family circle, her sister, uh, her mother, her best friend, who she showed her poetry to. And we went round to use Ted's copier and made copies and uh, Ted became entranced with Lee Harper uh, and, and with her sister Lynn and uh, 
he sent her poetry, sent her poetry to uh, to Leonard, along with her headshot. Leo not only was a poet, she was also a, a singer-songwriter. She and her sister were a group called Siren. Uh, made wonderful music. And um, an interesting time between my father and myself because of his fascination with the Harper sisters, with, with Lynn, but primarily with Lee. And they ended up as very close friends, very good friends. Uh, Lee and, and Ted. Uh, but a after he'd sent the, the poetry down to uh, Lee's poetry to, to um, Leonard, to Mr. Cohen, uh, I came into the apartment and Ted was, I guess, embarrassed about this. Said, you write poetry. Well, I, I should look at your poetry. So I, I gave what I had then to him. And this is very good, he said. And I, I'll send it to Leonard. And he did. And Leonard said of my poetry that, one, he didn't feel that I transcended my bourgeois upbringing. And two, he pointed out to Ted that Ted hadn't included a headshot with the with the manuscript. I wrote, I wrote a Leonard Cohen, a Leonard Cohen piece, a Leonard Cohen, uh, my Leonard Cohen story, my Leonard Cohen story, A Bourgeois Blues. Let me read it to you. This concerns Lee Harper's amazing first poetic outpouring, which my father sent to Leonard Cohen. Lee was and is beautiful, so Ted enclosed a headshot. A few days later, Ted said to me, you write poetry, and then something like, wow, you're good, you're really good, and he sent my poetry to Leonard. Leonard said he didn't think that I had transcended my bourgeois upbringing. He also pointed out to Ted that Ted hadn't sent my headshot. So I wrote Leonard a bourgeois blues. The bourgeois blues have spread way beyond Vienna. Yesterday they rolled under my bedroom door. They crept up my William Morris wallpaper, down the velvet drapes, they stained the sheets and ate my gladiola. Leonard thinks I'm bathed in it. Leonard thinks he's free. But I know we're swimming through the company's dross. This ain't the Jordan in which we've been tossed. It's the vomit of ages. Babylon is a large mother. Yesterday the bourgeois blues rolled under my door. Today I'll wash the curtain and hope there ain't no more. Ted read the poem to Leonard over the phone, and Leonard said, read it again. That's my Leonard Cohen story, but also my Ted story. Oh, oh.